Welcome back to this session, everyone. Hope all of you are back after the break. Just put a confirmation in the chat whether you guys are back or not. If you are back, just put a confirmation in the chat so that we can move ahead. Everybody is back. If possible, just put a confirmation. Yes, Ganesh, OK. Fine. So let's move ahead. So before the lunch break, we have already seen two labs. In the first lab, we saw how to use the speech service. In the second lab, we saw how to use the vision service. And with vision service, we tried to perform analysis over image. Like we tried to perform analysis over images. Uh, now let's do one thing. Let's try to perform uh, let's try to read text from the images. OK, so in my images, I will have some text and what I will do is I'll try to read the text inside those images. So how to do it? All of that we'll see. First, let me get those images in which I have text. I'll just go ahead and get those images over here. In which I have text. OK, so I'll take this images folder. And I'll just paste it in our folder that we have been working with. Right, so let me just go ahead and do that. All right, I've done it. Now let me show you the images over here. So you can see in the images that I'm showing to you, we have some text in them. So I want the vision service to identify what all text is written in the image. OK, and where is that text uh, in the image? So I wanted to return the coordinates of the detected position as well. So all of that I wanted to do. Fine, how to do it? Let's see. So we'll be using the same resource that we used for the second lab. OK, in our second lab, we tried to analyze images. Same resource that we used for it. Same resource we'll be using it for our third lab as well. In the third lab, we'll be trying to read text inside the images. Fine, let's see how to do that. Now, in order to do it, what I'll do is I'll create a coding file. Let me create a coding file over here. Let me call it a read text.py. Fine, and now let's move forward. So what I want to do is I want to read text inside the images using the resource that I created on Azure. Now, in order to use that particular resource, I'll need two things over here. First, I will need the uh, endpoint of the resource, which is present over here. And second, I will need the key of the resource. Fine, so let's go ahead, let's get those things. So key and endpoint, these are the th two things that I want. I'll just go ahead and mention them over here. And by the way, I didn't, uh, paste the code of the second lab right in the chat. So let me paste that particular code as well. This is the code for the second lab. You can try the same in your laptop. It will work. Anyways, coming to the third lab, wherein we are trying to read text from images. So for that, we'll be using this particular resource that we created earlier. In order to use this resource, I'll need two things. First is the key of the resource, and second is the endpoint of the resource. So let me take the key, paste it in my coding file, Similarly, let me take my endpoint and paste it in my coding file as well. All right, now let's move forward. So what I want to do is first I want to establish a connection with my resource. In order to do it, what I will do is uh, I will need help of a class which I will import. So the same class that I imported in the second lab, same class I'll import in this third lab as well. Same particular class. OK, fine. Then in order to establish a connection to the resource in the second lab, what did I do? I ran this particular piece of code, right? So in the third lab also, same particular code I will try to run. In order for this code to work, 
I will need to import this function called Azure Creek credential. So just like I did in the previous lab, in this lab also I will do the exact same thing. With this, what will happen is I will gain a resource. I will gain access to the resource that I had created on Azure. So let me print a message to the user that access to the vision resource has been granted. OK, now we'll try to run this particular coding file. So let me do that. I'll just say run the Python code, which is inside this file called read text dot py. OK, and I have gained access to the vision resource. Now using the revision resource, I'll try to read text from it. OK, so just like I did in the second lab, what did I do? First, I opened my image. Uh, read the data inside the image in uh, in hexadecimal format. Then I pass that image data in hexadecimal format to perform analysis. I will do the same exact thing over here. Same exact. Thing. It's just that now what I want to analyze will be slightly different. Okay. Previously, I wanted to analyze on um, things like uh, captions, tags, objects, and so on. This time, it will be slightly different. So this time, I will just say. I just want to read text. I just want to read text. That's all I will say. OK, and in order to read text, I will have to use uh, the AI models. So let me go ahead and let me import them. Just like I did in the second lab, I'll do it in the third lab as well. Fine, so it will read text and I will get the results of it. Let me go ahead and let me print it over here. I'll just go ahead and print it. OK. Here I have an issue. The issue is that uh, the file path is wrong. Uh, here uh, I should mention the correct name of the file. So it should be something like lincoln.jpg. Okay, after that, the code should work. Let's check. And now you can see I've got the results of my analysis. Okay, you can see this raw result over here. What I'll try to do is uh, instead of showing you the raw result, let me show the result to you in a much better manner. Fine, so it will read the blocks of code. Or sorry, read the blocks of text, I mean, and let me print them for you. And you can see this entire result is being shown to me in the form of a list. And inside this list, I have one single dictionary. You can see the highlighted part is one single dictionary. So inside the list, I have one element. In order to gain access to the element, I'll use index zero. So let me mention index zero. In order to get the gain access to first element, we use index zero, right? In order to gain access to second element, we use index one. In order to gain access to third element, we use index two and so on. Fine. So in order to gain access to first element, I use index zero. Fine. Let's go ahead and let's see. Now what will happen is these uh, square brackets that you see at the beginning and end will vanish, and I will only get this entire dictionary inside the list. So you will see that those square brackets will vanish now. And have a look at the result. You can see those square brackets at the start and the, uh, and the end have vanished. And you're only getting the dictionary inside that particular list. OK, fine. What I want to do is uh, I want to read out the lines of text that were read. Fine, so I want to read out the lines of text. There will be a lot of lines. Right, I can see a lot of lines of text. So what I will do is I'll run a loop. I will say for each line. In these multiple lines that you have read. Just go ahead and print out. Print it out. OK, and let's see what we are getting. Let's see. In the terminal, how does it look like? OK. So for example, this is the result of my first line. This is the result of a second line of text. Then this is the result of third line of text. This is the result of fourth line of text, right? From here to here. Then this is the result of fifth line of text. OK, fine. Now what I want to do is inside each line, we have multiple words. So for those words, I will run a loop again. So I will say for each word, in uh, the words that I'm detecting, 
just go ahead and print out each word one by one. So to go ahead and print out each word over here one by one. Let's see whether that is happening or not. OK, and here you can see it is giving information about each word. So this is the information about first word, second word, third word and so on. OK, for each word I'm getting information about the text as well as the coordinates. That is second thing. And third is the confidence that the model has in the detected text. So three things I'm getting for each word. First is the text. Second is the coordinates. And third is the confidence that the model has while detecting that text. Fine. So what I'll do is first I'll just print out the text of the word as it is. After that, uh, using the coordinates, I can do one thing. Uh, first of all, let me just print out the text as it is, and then I will show you what to do next. And you will see is one by one. I'm getting the text information. OK, so in this particular. Image. You can see we had different words. The first word was in second word was this third word was temple and so on, and that is exactly what we are getting over here. It says for first word is in second word is this third word is temple and so on. OK, so we are correctly detecting the text. Now what I want to do is just like I did for the second lab where for each detection I drew a rectangle over it. Similarly, or for each detected text, I will draw, draw a rectangle. In order to draw a rectangle, I will need help of uh, those coordinates. So just like I did for the second lab, if you remember, for the second lab, OK, uh, I tried to get the coordinates and then using those coordinates, I drew a rectangle. Similar thing I'll do over here, but let's see how to get the coordinates values first. So let's check. So in order to get the coordinate values, I will have to use this key called bounding polygon. And here you can see you are getting coordinates for all the four corners of a box. You are getting coordinates for all the four corners of a box. Fine, using it, I will draw a box over the detected text. Fine, so first let's get the coordinates. Coordinates. Uh, let me get it. I'll just go ahead and get it using this key called bounding polygon. OK, once we get it, what I will do is I will try to draw. Uh, a rectangle, but fine. Let me just print out the coordinates first. How do the coordinates look like? I'll try to print it out. Let's see. I'll just clear the terminal, run the code once again. OK, so for this word called in, this is the coordinates that I'm getting and so on. OK, I can do one thing. Mm, in order to make, in order to have coordinates for the box that I will draw, I need four points. So let me get those four points over here. One, two, three and four. OK, in order to get the four points, what I will do is in order to get the first point, I will have to go inside this first element of the list. In order to go inside the first element of the list, I'll use index zero. OK, so I will gain access to this particular first element inside. I want to access this value, the X value. So I'll use the key called X. Fine with that, what will happen? This X value will go over here. Similarly, I need the Y axis value as well. So I'll go ahead and get the Y axis value as well over here. Fine with that, what will happen? This particular value will go over here. And similarly, I'll do it for the second point, third point and fourth point. OK, let's do it. For first point, I've already done it. For second point, let me do the same. OK, second point coordinates are mentioned as the second element of the list. In order to gain access to second element of the list, I will have to use index of one. And that is exactly what I have done. Similarly, let me gain access to. Third point. For third point, uh, third point is present at third position of the list. In order to gain access to third position of the list, I'll have to use index two. So let me write over here index two. OK, and so on for the last point as well which is the fourth point in order to gain access to the fourth element of the list. I'll have to use index three. Fine. 
and just like I did earlier. OK, if you remember earlier in order to draw a figure, what did I do first? I open the image through a canvas and all of that. Same things I'll be doing over here as well. Same exact things I'll be doing over here. OK, nothing will be different. OK, fine. Let's go ahead and I will just say please move forward. And create a polygon of any number of uh, points here. I want to draw it of four points. So I'll just pass the coordinates of four points and that's it. OK, I'll say that the outline of the polygon will be of cyan color. And uh, the width of the outline will be of three pixels. If you want the outline to be fatter, increase the width. If, if, the, if you want the outline to be thinner, decrease the width. And just like for the second lab, what we did was we saved our results in a different output file. Here also I'll do the same. This is that the name of my output file will be different. I'll call it detected text. Dot JPG. Fine, and that's it over here. Let me go ahead and before I go ahead uh, in order to draw all of this, I had done this import in the second lab. Same thing I will do in the third lab as well. So you can see the code coding syntax for the second lab and third lab is almost the same. Let me go ahead. Let me run the code. Let's see. OK, it says results have been saved in this new file called detected text.jpg. Let's see. And over here you can see exactly what we wanted for every text or rectangle has been drawn. OK, for every text or rectangle has been drawn. I can make this even more better. Uh, currently I can see a lot of padding. Along each of the four sides of the image. OK, I can remove the padding altogether. Fine, let me do that. I'll just go ahead and remove the padding altogether. So I'll say I want a very tight layout. And I don't want a padding whatsoever. So I'll say padding equal to zero. Fine, that's it. I'll just go ahead and try to run the code over here. And let's see what happens. OK, I can see some messages in the chat. Let me read out those messages. Before that, I'll just check whether that padding has vanished or not. And yes, you can see that padding that we had on all the four sides of the images has vanished. OK. And you can try it on a different image as well. Let's say we have this image wherein we have handwritten text. It can also detect handwritten text. OK, so let me try it on this image, which is called node.jpg. So I'll try it on this particular image. Run the code and let's see whether it can detect handwritten uh, letters as well, handwritten text as well. And yes, you can see it can detect handwritten text as well. All right, so this was our third lab wherein we tried to read text from images and over here Ganesh uh, has asked something. Ganesh says, ha ha, yes, absolutely Ganesh. You can create a resource of multi service account or directly you can create a resource of vision service account as well. OK, even that will work Ganesh, absolutely. Then Venu has a question. Uh, can you paste the code of the first lab here? Yes, I'll do it. So this was our first lab wherein we try to work with uh, speech service. OK, then this was our second lab wherein we try to work with uh, wherein we try to perform analysis over images. And this is our third lab wherein we try to uh, read text inside the images. So I have pasted code for all the three labs. You can try it out. OK. And I have not removed the key in my code, so you don't have to create a resource yourself. I have created the resource. Uh, just mention the key of the resource in your code and you will be able to use the resource. OK, make sure that this key is never exposed to anyone. When you are working in your office, do not expose your key to anyone because if they have the key, they will be able to use the resource. And every time when they use the resource, some amount of money will be deducted from your subscription. But fine for me, it's fine uh, because to you as students, it's fine if you use this. But going forward in your office, make this a practice that uh, this key should not be visible to anyone. OK, so there are many coding practices to make it not visible, but fine. We'll not go into it. All right, let's go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, welcome. Will. 
all right uh now moving on to the next lab and uh, what i will try to do now is uh, i will try to perform analysis using a different uh, service okay so let me try to use translator service okay i can use this translator service uh, or sorry uh, fine leave it translator service for later let me use language service and what i'll try to do is just like i analyze images right using the vision service now i will try to analyze text using language service so apart from making chat box this uh, this service can also be used to analyze text fine so let's see how to do it so first i will have some text with me let me go ahead and let me obtain that text okay let me go ahead and let me obtain it over here this will be our lab number 4 Okay, and let me show that information to you. Okay, so I have uh, text over here. What I uh, actually have is I have five text files, and uh, here I have reviews. Okay, so let's say I own a travel website. Let's say something like Make My Trip, and whatever reviews were left by the users, I want to perform analysis over it. that whether they were positive reviews negative reviews or whatever okay so it's not necessary that whatever text you have is in the language that you understand for example a user might enter a text in french language for example how would you know what does this text mean if you want to perform analysis on it how to do it all of that will try to understand fine let's see now uh what uh, so just to revise our first lab was what our first lab was to uh, use the speech service to translate speech our second lab was to use the vision service to analyze images our third lab was to use the vision service to uh, read text from images now our fourth lab is to use the language service okay so let's go ahead let's create a resource of language service over here so we'll go to the home page of azure i will try to search for azure ai services and i will try to create a resource of language service here there is a option to create a resource of language service let me click on that option and let me create a resource of language service over here here it is just giving me a description of what all things you can do fine i can just skip it let me go ahead and now i am uh, redirected to a form that i have to fill first field in the form is asking me to select the subscription you as you guys know that in one account you can have more than one subscriptions in different different subscription you can have different amount of money left so you have to choose the subscription of your choice that has enough money left because whatever you will be doing on azure some charge will be deducted so you should have enough money left in your subscription they, then uh, uh, the next field in the form is asking me to select a resource group you can select a existing resource group or create a new one let me select a existing resource group that i created in the morning called webinar rg after that it is asking me to select the region for the resource make sure to choose a region closer to your user if your user is in the united states then to uh, create a uh, then create a resource making sure that the region that you choose for the resource is closer to united states just for better latency okay so depending on where your user is you have to choose the region here i'll keep it default to east us after that i need to give a name to the resource let me give it a name i'll call it webinar language resource then i am being asked to mention the pricing tier so let me select that i have two options free and standard with free tier there are certain limitations so i will choose the standard tier so that i have no limitations at all however with standard tier some amount of money will be deducted which is fine for now okay i'll agree to terms and conditions and i will directly ask azure to review the details that are entered by me and allow me to create the resource so let me click on review plus create so it will run a validation in the back end to check whether it can give me the things that i'm asking for and the validation was successful because of which the create button has now been enabled 
So now I'll go ahead and click on the create button and a resource of the language service will be created for me. Once the resource of language service has been created, we will see how using the resource, we can go ahead and perform our fourth lab. Our fourth lab will be to analyze text and we'll be seeing how to analyze text in our fourth lab. But for that, we needed to create a resource of language service and we have done that over here. Okay. Up till here, if there is any sort of doubt, do let me know. So guys, the only thing that is needed over here is that uh, in order to use these services, you will have to either write code in Python programming language or C sharp programming language. Okay, so you should have knowledge of at least one out of these two languages and then it's very easy for you. Huh, if you do not have understanding of any of these languages, then it might get a little difficult for you. Okay, so yes, uh, some programming knowledge experience is required, either Python or C sharp. Okay, let's go ahead. I'll go to my resource group. Within my resource group, I've created a lot of resources. Let me go to the language resource. Fine, it has been created. Now I can use it in my code over here. All right, so let me create a coding file. I'll create a coding file called uh, analyze text.py. And now uh, let's go ahead. So what I want to do is in order to gain access to the resource of language service, I will need two things. First, I will need the endpoint of the resource and then the key of the resource. That I will get it from the key and endpoint section present in the left hand side of your screen. Let me click on it and then I'll gain access to keys and endpoints of the resource. There are two keys present over here. You can use any one of them. Just one extra key is present for backup purposes so that if something happens to the first key, let's say it is corrupted or something like that, at least you have the second key that you can use. Okay, let me use the first key over here. So I'll mention the key of my resource. And after mentioning the key, I'll go ahead and mention the endpoint of my resource. OK, these two things are done. Using these two things, I'll gain access. I'll try to gain access to the resource of language service. Now, uh, in order to do that, what I will need is I'll need the help of a class which I will import. So from Azure folder, there is a subfolder called AI. Inside that subfolder, I have a file called text analysis analytics. And inside that file, I have a class called text analytics client. Text analytics client. OK. I have imported that class. Now using the class, I'll try to gain access to the resource of language service. The first thing that I need to do is I need to pass the endpoint of my resource. So let me go ahead and let me pass the endpoint of my resource. The second thing that I need to do is I need to go ahead and pass the key of my resource, which will act as the credential. OK, so let me do that, but I cannot pass the key directly, so I will have to pass it with the help of a function. So from Azure folder, there is a subfolder called core inside that subfolder there is a file called credentials and from that file i will try to import this function called azure key credential now let me go ahead and let me call this particular function and inside it i'll pass the key of my resource fine so i'm passing two main things first is the endpoint of my resource second is the key of my resource all right with this i will gain access to the language resource that I created. With this, I should gain access to the language resource. Okay. Uh, if this particular code works, if there are no errors, that means access has been granted. So I'll just print it the next line that access to language resource has been granted. Okay, let's try to run the code. So I'll say please run the code in this coding file called uh, analyze text dot py. Here in my coding file, the spelling of analyze is wrong. Let me correct that spelling. Okay, fine. I'll try to run this coding file. Let's see if it works. And yes, I have been granted access to the language resource. Now what I will do 
is uh, you can see in the reviews folder there are five reviews in text format first i will just read the reviews one by one uh, then i will pass it to the language resource to perform analysis first let's read the reviews one by one which are there inside the reviews folder so i will say that the name of the folder in which i have the reviews is r e r e v i e w s right this is the name you can see over here this is the name same name i'm passing okay same name i'm passing All right, fine. Then I will say go inside every file of that folder. OK, now in order to do that, I'll need to work with my operating system. So I'll use the OS library for that. I will have to import the OS library. Which helps me to go through my operating system. OK, fine. And I will say inside the reviews folder, go through each file. Inside each file you have uh, reviews. OK, so first I will say print the name of each file. First, I will say print the name of each file. And let's see whether we are able to print the names or not. So name of file one is review one dot txt. The name of file two is review two dot txt. Then name of file three is review three dot txt and so on. Let's see, are we able to print the names? Yes, we are able to print the names, okay. Now what I will do is I'll go inside each file, I'll open up the content inside of that file and read the text inside of it. OK, so I'll say open up the content inside each file. OK, so I'll have to create a path. So I will say inside the reviews folder. Go inside it. Then go inside the file, the name of which is present over here. OK, so I uh, will have a path something like this. It will reviews forward slash review one dot txt. Similarly, in the second loop over here, the file name will change to review two dot txt. In the third iteration of this loop, file name will change to review three dot txt and so on. Fine. Now let's go ahead. I want to open the file and uh, read the content inside of it. But in order to read the characters, I will have to mention the character encoding. So I'll use the popular one, which is UTF-8. OK, that is the character encoding used in all of our laptops. So I'll use it. And I will say, please read the text. Whatever is the text, store it, and then print it out to the user. Store it, and then print it out to the user. OK. So you can see in review one dot txt, this was the review. One second, where did it go? Yes, from year to year, the highlighted part is the review. Now, uh, this information being shown is too cluttered. So let me do one thing. Let me display it by separating it with some line. I'll do that. OK, now you will see one second. I'll run the code again. OK, now you can see the review is separated with the help of a line over here. Fine, and I'll do one thing. OK. I've made it even better. All right, so you can see in review one dot txt, this was the review. Then in review two dot txt, this was the review and so on. OK. Uh, let me make this even more better over here. I have added this separation with help of underscores. I'll run the code and fine. Uh, in fact, let me put this in a new line. So what I want is after doing the separation, I want this name of the file to be present in a new line. So fine, I'll just go ahead and do that. OK, perfect. So after doing the separation, now the name of the file is on a new line. OK, so in review 1.txt, you can see the review. Then in review 2.txt, this is the review and so on. What I want to do is now that I can read the reviews, I want to go ahead and pass it to the language resource. 
so that it can start doing its analysis. OK, fine. So let's see. So I'll say, OK, now that I've gained access to the language resource, please go ahead and do analysis. So what type of analysis? One, analys one analysis could be to detect language. So I will use the detect language method over here. OK, I'll use the detect language method. And I'll say detect language on the text that I'm going to pass to you. Right. And let's see what happens. I'll just go ahead and uh, try to see what will happen over here. Let's print this out. What are we getting? Let's see. OK, so this is the result that I got for language detection. OK, this is the result for language detection of fifth review file. Then this is the result of language detection of fourth review file and so on. All right, here what I want is so uh, I'm getting this result in the form of a list. And inside this, uh, I want to gain access to the first element. For that, I will have to use index zero. So let me go ahead and let me use index zero. And now you will see that from that list, I'll gain access to the first element inside of it. OK, here. Uh, there is an issue. Uh, OK, let me correct that issue. OK, fine. So you can see now you're getting the result uh, for language detection of every file, but this is much more better and now Let's make it even more better so you can see for the last review. The language detected is French for the second last review language detected is English and so on. So I just want the language detected. So in order to do this. Uh, I will just say that give me information about the primary language that is detected. I'll just mention it over here. Let's run the code. OK, fine. This result is even more better over here. And now I'm getting three things. First is the name of the detected language. Second is the code of that language. And third is the confidence that the model has in its detected language. So three things I'm getting. OK, fine. Uh, now I just want the name. Just the name. So I'll just go ahead and mention over here that I just want the name. And I will say. Language detected is so and so, whatever it is, I'll just print it out. Let me run the code. Okay, so for example, in the first review, you can see the language detected was English. In the second review, language detected was English. Third review also, language detected was English. Fourth review also language detected as English, but the fifth review you can see the language has been correctly detected as French. So this is one analysis that we have done like this. We can perform more analysis. Let me show you that. So over here we have performed one analysis. Uh, now let me show you more. OK, and by the way. Just enter this in a new line. This is better. OK, now what I'll do is similarly, I'll try to gain. Uh, I'll try to analyze the sentiment as well. OK, so let me go ahead. And let me try to analyze the sentiment. So using the language resource, I'll try to analyze sentiment that OK, what is the sentiment of the review? Is it positive, negative? What is the user trying to convey? So just like earlier. I'll pass my text and let's see what we get. OK, uh, here the analyzed spelling is wrong. It should be Z E. So I've corrected that spelling now and now I should not get any error. OK, and you can see this is the result for the uh, sentiment analysis for the last review. Similarly, for the second last review, I have obtained re uh, result of sentiment analysis. Similarly, for third last review is the result for sentiment analysis and so on. OK. 
here i'm getting the result in the form of a list so in order to get access to the first element of the list i'll use index 0 let me do that let's see what we get now i'll gain access to the first element of that list okay this is better now what i want is i just want to have a look at the sentiment value whether it's positive or negative so in order to get the sentiment value i will have to get it using the key called sentiment so i'll just mention it over here that get me the sentiment value using the key called sentiment that's it and now i should get the sentiment detected so for example for the last review it's positive and so on fine i'll just print it in a much more readable manner for you guys i'll say sentiment detected is so and so let me run the code okay so for example, for the last review, it says the sentiment is positive. Then for the second last review, let's read it out. It says hotel is recorded on so and so street. Traffic from early morning. OK, noise would not be so bad if rooms were better insulated. OK, had to pour, put cotton balls in my ears. So and so rooms are tiny. OK. Uh, then it says that the hotel is in uh, so and so district with lots of good places to eat. So it has mentioned some positive thing as well as negative thing as well. OK, that's why you can see the sentiment that was detected was mixed sentiment. OK, similarly over here, mixed sentiment. OK, here you can see at the start it has mentioned a good review, but at the end it has tried to do some complaints. OK, it says at the end that OK, there is some noise issue in the room. And so on. On the other hand, this particular review, you can see it's a bad review that was left by the user. So you can see the sentiment that was detected was negative. OK, fine. Uh, so this is another analysis that you can do. One, uh, there are lots of things that you can do. I'll show you one more. Another is uh, recognizing entities. OK, so let me go ahead and let me show you how to do that, how you can recognize entities. So it could be any entity mentioned, city name, building name, any name, any entity, a person name. So whatever is mentioned, whatever main entities are mentioned, I want to go ahead and uh, get information about it. Let's see how to do it. So using the language resource, I will say, please recognize the entities. Please recognize the entities. I'll just pass the text on which it will be able to recognize and let's see what we get. I'll try to run the code. OK, and we'll get the entity analysis result for every review. For example, this is the entity analysis result of the last review. OK, here I'm getting the result in the form of a list. Let me gain access to the first value of the list using index 0. So you will see those square brackets at the beginning and end will vanish and I'll get access to the first element inside of that list. Once that is done, I'll show you what to do next. OK, now. I have information about entities over here. Let me get information about it using this key called entities. OK, let me get information about it. There will be a lot of entities involved, so I might have to use a loop later. on. Yeah, there are a lot of entities involved. So let me do one thing. Let me use a loop over here. I'll say run a loop. OK, in fact, let me do one thing. I'll store the multiple entities here. And after that, I'll try to run a loop. Or every single entity. What I will try to do is I'll just try to print it out and let's see what happens. Let's check. I'll try to print out result of every single entity one by one. Let's see how it looks like. So that we can make the changes later on. OK, here I can see. 
different different entities. Let me do one thing. I can see the text of that entity and the category in which it belongs to. So let me show these two things over here. So I will say print the text as well as the category in which it belongs to. Okay, this should be better. Now uh, let's go ahead. Let's try to run the code and let's see what happens. And you will see entity is detected. For example, the first entity in this review is hotel. It belongs to location category. Then next entity Buckingham Palace. It belongs to location category and so on. OK, so whatever entities are detected, it will try to go ahead and mention them out for every review. You can see this for the fourth review. OK, a lot of entities. Similarly, for the third review, a lot of entities. Similarly, for the second one, and similarly for the first one. OK, fine. So this was our fourth lab of today, wherein we try to analyze text. OK, so I'll try to take this code. And send it to you in the chat. So Ganesh has a question over here. Ganesh says, uh, what kind of tasks we can do using language resource? So two main things, Ganesh. First is you can build chatbots. Chatbots similar to this. For example, I showed you that website in the morning, lj.com. You can see we have a chatbot over here, right? Conversational bot. So just like you have a chatbot over here, it's just that this chatbot might have been built uh, by some person who is technically very smart or something like that. But what if we are not technically so smart? Let's say I don't know any coding language or anything like that. I want to build this uh, chatbot. OK, how to do it? You can do it with language resource. So that is one thing that you can do, Ganesh. You can build uh, conversational bots, integrate it into your website. Very, very easy. OK, if you want, I'll show it to you today. Uh, then Ganesh, second main thing you can do is you can do analysis on text, just like I did right now wherein I had some reviews in the form of text and I did analysis on it. So those are the two main things that you can do. Kishore asks about recording. So recording uh, will be available on our official YouTube channel. So it will be uploaded over there. From there, everybody can access the recording. OK, uh, Deepak says mention uh, send the coding PDF. I guess you meant the coding file. I have sent the code uh, itself. You can paste the code in your file. Can you please share with me the resource for building a bot? Okay, Ganesh, if you want, I'll show it to you right now. Want to see it? I'll show it to you. Not a, not a worry. Fine. So we'll see how to build that conversational chatbot. It's very, very easy. Okay, not at all hard. So let me go ahead and let me uh, try to see. Uh, let me try to explain to Ganesh how we can build that chatbot and integrate into our website. Very easy. So any non-technical person can do this. OK, so let me go ahead and let me show to you how to do it. So in order to do it, what I will do is uh, first thing that you need to do is you need to create a resource of language service and we have done that, right? I already have a resource of language service created for me, so that's good. Now. What I will do uh, is here. Mm, uh, I will have to do one thing. I will have to uh, go to my language portal. Let me check here. Is there a link of my language portal? Huh. Get started with language studio. Here is that. Fine. And now what I will do is here. I will mention the details of what kind of chatbot I want to build or what kind of conversational bot I want to build. Fine. So let's go ahead and let's do it. So first of all, let me try to sign in. OK, I performed that sign in activity. Fine, sign in activity is done. It prompted me once again, but fine, I've done it. OK, then uh, let me fill in the details over here. What is this directory? 
so for example let's say you are working in any company then uh, if they are providing a azure account to you okay uh, that azure account uh, in order to create it first they have to create a directory and in that directory they will assign different different permissions so the azure accounts in one directory will have certain permissions azure accounts in different other directory will have different permissions and so on but fine this account that i am using was not given by any company i have created it so if you also have created it yourself in your in your case you will get one option only which is default directory but let's say you are ceo of a company and uh, you have created you have given azure accounts to multiple employees of your company uh, there you would have opt, uh, uh, got a chance to put those accounts into different different directories because in different different directories you can give different different access anyways here i just have one directory which is default directory then my subscription i just have one subscription msdn if you have multiple choose any subscription of your choice which has enough money in it resource type we know language resource we have already created a resource of it let's select that one fine and i'm connected with my language resource now now what i will do next is i want to create a conversational bot so i'll click on this button called create new and what i want to do is i want to create a conversational bot so i'll say custom question answering i'll click on this third button called custom question answering i want that bot to answer my questions okay now in order to do it uh, here it is asking me to create a resource of search service so this option was previously not there where we had to create a resource of search service but now they have created this service called search service right and it helps us to search for any content uh, uh, it helps to search for anything within our uploaded content so what we'll do is in order to make our chatbot we'll have to train our chatbot using some data so how will uh, the scanning of that uh, data happen by default yes the chatbot does the scanning but if it uses azure search it will do the scanning even in a more better manner okay so previously even without azure search you were able to build a chatbot this is that with azure search it will be able to scan the data on which it wants to train in a more better manner fine let's continue to it and we'll have to create a resource of search service let's give it a name i'll call it webinar search resource location select a location closer to your user choose the pricing tier i will choose standard tier because in free tier there might be some limitations okay now uh, okay ganesh the example that we took na for creating that uh, custom bot that can be integrated in a website with q and a it will be more easier for you okay uh, even with customized conversational bot the same things will happen is is that there you will have to do slightly uh, i mean more settings you can make it more personalized and all of that but fine uh, just try with this the one that i am showing to you because i am almost halfway into this okay uh, let's say if you do not find this bot uh, good then we'll move on to the other approach okay fine let's let's see this this approach first uh, we'll co continue with this approach and let's see ganesh says can you share with me the acha i think that question was asked earlier okay fine let's connect to our resource search resource and let's see what to do next it is trying to connect so we'll have to wait for a few seconds or so and then we'll see what to do next that is a sweet it is trying to connect to the search resource so guys before uh, like few months back uh, this option was not there that in order to create a conversational bot you need to create a search resource even without that you were able to train your uh, conversational bot on your own data but with search resource uh, the training will happen in a one, in a much better manner fine so they have made it mand mandatory now which is fine okay now let me go back to the language studio and i'll create a custom question answering bot 
Okay, your what options are shown to me? It says I want to select the language. Uh, no, no, uh, my language will be the same. It will be English only. Okay, so I will just say English. Fine. However, for different pro the project that I will be building, it will have uh, uh, so all the projects that I will be building will will have the same language. Okay. However, in this lab, I'll just be building one project. But let's say in future, I'm just putting a setting that in in, in even in future, uh, whatever projects I'll be building, uh, in that the language that will be used will be of English language. Suppose you might have a case where for different projects, let's say you want to build up conversational bot of English language for the first time, second time uh, based on Hindi language and so on. If you want to do it for different different languages, choose the first option. I don't want to do that, so I'll choose the second one. Okay, fine. Let's go ahead. Let's give this project a name. I'll give it a name called Learn FAQ. Uh, description. I'll say FAQ for Microsoft Learn. Okay. Let's say if you ask the chatbot a question and if 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 it does not find any answer, then what should it return? So I will say return an answer saying uh could not understand could not understand please elaborate okay so if the chatbot does not find the answer uh, then i wanted to return this uh, fixed message saying that could not understand please elaborate okay let me click on next button and create the project Fine. So over here, the project has been created. And what I will do is in order to make my chatbot, I will have to train my chatbot, right? So how will it know what answers to give? So I will have to train it on some data. So I already have that data with me. And this data is this link, uh, this uh, article page that Microsoft has. OK, so I want to make a chatbot uh so that if anybody has any issues with microsoft uh, products they can just come to that chatbot and ask it and based on the answers given over here it will just go ahead and uh, you know uh, give me the answers okay so fine i wanted to scan this entire faq document fine so what i'll do is i will say add a source uh so my data will come from where i will say it will come from url so let me go ahead and let me add that URL over here. I will say the name is learn FAQ page. I'll say name is learn FAQ page. Uh, and let me say, let me attach the URL over here. OK, fine. And uh, the data that you are att attaching, uh, do you want the structure of that data to be auto detected? Yes, I'll say auto detect. OK. Uh, then I will just add this URL. So I'm saying that, OK, I want to train my chatbot on this data. OK, and as part of my data, I've sent a URL in that URL. Whatever data is there, it will go through it. Uh, data in that uh, article. I have said the URL. I've shared the URL of the article in that article. Whatever data is there, it will train train on it. OK, and uh, fine. Now, once the training is done, let me show you what will happen first. OK, by the way, uh, what I want to do. Is uh, let me do one thing. This is done, so I'll go to edit knowledge base and have a look based on the data that it has trained. It will already generate some question and answers on its own. OK, it will already have a list in its mind. So for example, if anybody asks how much does the training cost? So it will just give this particular answer over here. OK, so based on the data that you provided, it has already generated some custom question and answers. So if you ask a question that is similar to this one, OK, then it will give this answer over here. So this chatbot is little smart nowadays. Uh, previously, it was not so. Previously, what used to happen is only if you provide this question, uh, this exact question, then only it gave the answer. But let's say you provided a question similar to this one, then it would not understand. So at that time, what we used to do is we used to go to alternate question and we used to add an alternate question. So for example, instead of asking this question saying how much does the company, how much does the training cost? 
somebody can ask a question saying uh what is the compensation okay what is the fee of the training right somebody can ask this which is similar to the statement that i made over here but previously if i ask the sentence uh that is not exactly mentioned in its own database then it not it, 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 it would not understand it so at that time we would go to alternate questions and uh, as a alternate question we would add this that okay if a person asks this then it's similar to the original question and in that case give this fixed answer only okay so you can still add alternate questions if you want to okay then now uh, let me go ahead and let me test it out okay i'll just go ahead and test it out i'll say what uh, okay i'll say how much does the training cost So the chatbot is a little smart nowadays, but still you should not uh, rely on it. You should add, add as much alternate questions as possible. Okay. Uh, and you can see over here, uh, I asked it how much does the training cost and it gave this answer exactly as expected. You can edit the answer. You can edit the question. It's completely up to you. Okay. Here you have option to edit the answer. You can edit the question as well. Okay. Uh, let me ask it a question that is similar to the primary question. I'll say, what is the fee of training? Okay, and it says most of the Microsoft learning content and was. Ah, so it is not understanding this. So over here, I should add an alternate question. Say, what is the fee of training? What is the fee of training? Okay, in that case, I want to do the same thing. I want to give. I want uh, the chatbot to give the exact same answer. Let me go ahead and let me save this. And after saving, let me ask it again. OK, so I will ask it the primary question first. I'll say how much does the training cost? It gave this answer like I expected. Now I will say what is the fee of training? Let me ask it what is the fee of training? Uh, in this case, I wanted the exact same answer and now it is giving me the exact same answer. So I hope you understood the use of alternate question. What is the use of the other two options? I'll show that to you. Don't worry. OK, here. What is the change that was made? And let me still save it. OK, but let me ask it something like this. Let me ask it a question like hi. Now this question is nowhere within its database. It has not learned it from the data that I shared with it. It does not learn that if I ask it a question like hi, what is the answer that should be given? So it will give me a default answer saying could not understand. Please elaborate. So what I want to do is I'll go to manage sources. And here while adding a source, I'll do one thing. I will say please allow chit chatting as well. So I'll say allow chit chatting. And how do you want the uh, mode of chit chatting? I will say I want it in a friendly manner. OK, and now what will happen is if you go ahead and test your chatbot, so now if you ask these basic questions like hi, hello, it will give the answers for them as well. And now you will see that you add added chit chatting in the uh, database. It has added some chit chatting questions and answers. Okay, it has added some chit chatting question and answers now. Okay, so let me test the chatbot, and now I will ask it hi. Okay, so it it is giving me the answer now. And say how are you and so on like this you can add more question and answers if you want to currently I have 49 149 question and answers automatically added you can add more question and answers okay it's completely up to you now in order to use this in my website i will have to first deploy this so i'll go to deploy section which is there on the left hand side of the screen i'll go to deploy and i'll click on deploy button and it will publish it over here or in other words it will deploy it so that i can use it in my website and i will show you how you can use it in your website okay it seems it has deployed now okay deployment is done so uh let me do one thing i'll go to this button called create a bot 
let me go to this button called create a bot. I have clicked on that button. Now we'll fill in the details over here. OK, I will say I want to create a chatbot. I have already trained my chatbot. Uh, now I want to use it in my website. So for that, I just have to fill in this form. Let me fill in all the details over here. I'm fine with all the details. And fine, it is asking me for some more details. It is saying that this chatbot that I'll be integrating into your website will be based on which language. Any language of your choice doesn't matter really. OK, uh, and let me fill in the details over here. Yet a new app service plan. It says the current pricing tier defaults to star. OK. OK, fine. Uh, language key resource, huh? So how to get it? I'll just click on this button called prediction URL. And from here, I will get the key. So I'll just copy this key. And paste it over here. OK, so I'm saying that I want to use this particular trained chatbot. I have already trained my chatbot, deployed it. But in order to now use it onto my website, I'm just filling in this form. The rest of the things I'll keep it the same. And let me create this chatbot over here. Once it's created, I'll show you how to integrate it into your website. So you can see up till now, no code has been written for by me whatsoever. No code. So this can be done by a non-technical person as well. OK, and I will show you now how to integrate it into your website. Let me. Uh, fully create this chatbot. I had already trained it and now I'm making sure that I can integrate it into my chatbot. So in order to use this chatbot, I'll have to create a resource of it and here I'm just in the process of creating the resource. You can see creation is still happening. Once the creation is done, I'll just wait for a few minutes to let the creation complete. Once the creation is done, I'll show you what to do next. Let the creation take its time. Let it complete. We might have to wait for a few minutes. OK, so you can see up till now I have trained my chatbot during training. No code I have used. Similarly, uh, I wanted to use my chatbot. So I had to create a resource of it. So I just filled in the form one minute back and created a resource of it. OK. Now I, that I've created a resource of my chatbot, I can go ahead and then use it. So I'll let the creation complete. Once the creation is complete, I can use the chatbot and integrate it anywhere I want. I can integrate it into my website or any other place that I want. Let us just wait. OK, Ganesh has a question. Ganesh said I have done Q&A about last time, but I have difficulty with customizing. Achha, I'll do one thing, Ganesh. At the end, if I have time, we will see that option also. Okay. After covering the remaining services a little, if we get time, I'll show you that as well. Okay. Or else I'll just give you the my tutorial video on the same if, I, if we do not find time. But I think we will find time definitely. If we do not, I'll send you my tutorial video that I have recorded on the same topic. Anyways, let us just wait. Up till now, guys, everybody getting it, making sense. Ganesh, everybody else. Deepak. Then we have Venu. Making sense, guys. Venu, Ganesh, Deepak, everybody else. Yes. OK. Fine, so let us just wait. Here I have trained my chatbot without any code. You can see it was how easy it was to train my chatbot. And uh, after training my chatbot, I deployed it. Then to use my chatbot, I had to create a resource of my deployed chatbot. So I did that and here the uh, resource has, is being created. Once it's fully done, we'll then integrate it into our website, which is very, very easy. The creation is taking slightly higher time, but that's fine. Let us just wait. Ganesh is actually I'm preparing for AI 900 exam. OK. Oh, 
Okay, so just three things you will need to do for that. First, complete all the official labs. As you would already know, uh, you can just search for AI 900 labs. And you will get the link for it. Okay, we have already done many of these labs right now. So just first do all the labs. So for example, here we just did question answering lab just now, right? Like that there are many other labs, object detection and all of that. Uh, OCR on images we have already done. So reading text from images we have already done. Analyzing text we have already done. Right, object detection we have already done. Then uh, I guess here it might be using the vision service to analyze images. I guess that also we have done. So many of the things we have already done over here. Okay, then explore space is done. Translation. So first is complete the labs. That is one thing. Uh, Second, just go through the AI 900 learning path on Microsoft website. Okay, so just click on the first link over here that pops up and here you will have uh, access to uh, the learning materials. Okay, so you can go through this. Uh, this is a textual based tutorial, so that is another. So first is labs. Second is go through this text based tutorial and third at the end. Uh, if you get time, do go through examination dumps. So I guess you already we would already know about different uh, websites that give you access to dumps. One is examtopics.com. You can go through the, uh, the dumps in that website. OK, although uh, what it will do is let's say it would have a database of 300 questions for AI 900. Uh, out of 300, it will give you free access to 100. For the remaining 200, it will ask you to subscribe. But fine, if you don't want to subscribe, at least look at the first 100 so that you have a good enough idea of how the question and answers look like. So just three things. First, go through labs. Second, sorry, labs is over here. Second, go through the learning path, this text-based tutorial. And third, if possible, if you get time, go through examination tasks. That's it. Uh, yes, scenario-based will be asked. Yes, finish. So, uh, before doing this, make sure that you have the necessary knowledge of AI fundamentals like machine learning, deep learning. You should have a average understanding of that. So, for example, in machine learning, there is a concept called hyperparameter tuning. You should know what is that. Okay. So, those fundamental questions should be done first. Okay. So, first, you should know how to make your own AI models. Okay. Then you should jump on to how to use the ready-made AI models. First, you should know how to build your own AI models, either through machine learning or through deep learning. If you have knowledge of both fields, well and good. But even if you have knowledge of one field, let's say machine learning field, that's fine as well. And yes, you will get asked scenario-based questions. As I mentioned, to get an actual sense of what the questions look like, uh, go through that website called examtopics.com. Uh, there you will gain access to questions that have been actually asked in the exam. OK, those are actual questions that have been asked in the exam and you will get a good enough understanding. OK, if there is any other question, let me know. Anyways, uh, here I was creating a resource. Of my bot and that has been done. OK, perfect. So now I'll go to my bot resource, which is there over here. My bot resource. What I'll do is I'll go to channels. I'll go to this uh, section called channels. OK, then I'll say that I want to integrate this chatbot in my own website, so I'll click on this second link web chat. I want to integrate my chatbot in my own website. Click on this link called default site and here you can see this particular code. All you have to do is in your website just paste this code. And you will gain uh, and uh, the chatbot will be integrated into your website. So let me show that to you. So just as an example, let's say. Just as an example now. Let us say. OK, let's suppose I have a. Folder called lab five. Mm, chatbot. OK, and here I will try to create a. Small website using my HTML page. OK, so let me create a small website over here using my HTML page. Sorry, 
HTML page, not a Python file. Let me create a HTML file. I can give it any name that I like. I'm just giving it a name of index.html. You can give it any name, abc.html, anything will work. Now, uh, let me just have a predefined HTML template. Okay, so here I am getting option in Visual Studio to have a sample template. Okay, and now let me open this HTML page for you just to show you how it looks like. Here is my HTML page and let's say this is a blank website. Okay, in this website now I want to integrate my chatbot. How do I do it? Just copy your code. From here you can see the embedded code. Just copy it and paste it in your HTML page. Paste it over here. Okay, copy and paste. That's it. No other thing. And now you will see in your web page or your website. You will have access to that chatbot. Currently it is connecting, so let it connect. Okay, not an issue. We'll let it connect. We'll have to wait for a few minutes to let it connect. And after that, you will gain access to the chatbot over here. I hope there is no traffic related issue because of which I'm getting this error. Uh, but anyways, we'll have to wait. Just so that I can show to you that integration is possible. Okay, so just take the code. And paste it, huh? Uh, I I forgot to do one thing, which was that I forgot to mention my uh, key. Okay, so let me go ahead. Let me copy the key of my chatbot and paste it over here. That is one thing that I forgot to do. I've pasted it, and now let's see. Okay. It is still uh, giving me a problem. I hope I have given the correct key. Anything wrong with this? Uh, okay, let's do one thing. Let me take the key from here. It's the same key that I took earlier, same exact one. I'm just confused whether this error is because of my mistake or because of some traffic issue. Because the key I've pasted, nothing else we need to do over here. Go to channels, chat, default site, and here. I'm sorry, or do I need to paste this one? Okay, let me check. Maybe I'm forgetting. Maybe that is the key that I need to paste. I'll just go ahead, do it. Let's see whether that works. The only issue is with my key, I guess. Ah, fine. That was the key. So the same key that is shown to you above, the same key you have to paste over here. Okay, fine. So I forgot that. Okay, no issues. And you can see chatbot has been integrated. Okay, here you will see. Uh, what is the cost of training? Uh, now, oh guys, we might have to wait for a minute or so. Uh, it will take its time. Okay, you can see chatbot has been integrated. It might take its time to give answers, so we might have to wait. But still, let me ask it. Let me take a risk whether it is giving me the answer or not. You can see it's taking time as expected. This happens usually when we integrate. Okay, so when we integrate for the first time, it just take a few more seconds or uh, even a minute, and you can see it is taking time exactly as expected. Fine, we'll wait and we'll definitely get some answer over here. So let's just wait. Our chatbot has been integrated, and we'll just wait and we should get our answer. And you can see I'm getting the answer over here. Okay, uh, I can ask it. I want to learn. about certification exam. OK, and you can see it has given me the answer over here. 
Okay. So like this, you can see we have created a chatbot that I trained on my own data and I have integrated. Like this, you can train on your own data, whatever data that is, and integrate it into your website. Your my HTML page is very simple. You can obviously in your website, your own website, that HTML page will be more better looking and you can integrate it anywhere. OK, you can make the chatbot full size, small size, whatever you want. You can make it like that, but fine. Uh, main job was to show you how to integrate the chatbot and we have done that over here. Fine. So this was about the chatbot, right? Uh, up till now, I hope it's clear to everyone. I hope it's making sense. If there is any doubt to any student, do let me know. Making sense, guys? Yes, welcome, Ganesh. Uh, other students, only Ganesh is answering. Deepak, they know. Other students, are you guys getting it? Then they might have other students, right? Ganesh is answering. Okay, I hope other students are getting it. If there is any doubt, to let me know. Clear, Lakshma. Okay. Fine. If you want to try out this code, you can try it out. I am giving to you in your ch chat. You can try it out. Okay. Now remember that mostly your key should not be exposed. Here I am exposing it to you guys. It's fine. Uh, but the danger is that okay, let's say. If you, when you're working in your office, uh, you create the resource, expose the key to that resource, then anybody who has the key will be able to use it. And uh, if they use it for many, many times, you will be deducted for some good, uh, high amount of uh, cost from your subscription. Okay. So, but fine, for your practice, I'm giving it so you can try it out. But remember, key should never, ever be exposed. Okay. Make it a habit. OK, anyways. Uh, Gopin says I'd been late. Please give a recap when free. Yes, so Gopin, acha, were you present in the morning when we give a re uh, when I explained about AI resources? Were you present then or no? Just let me know so that I can know when to where to start from. Were you present? Not full. That's hard. So Gopin, what we did was in the morning first, I explained to you what is the field of AI. And then I told you that, OK, uh, uh, Azure has made many AI services available to you. So it's not necessary that you should be very technically good. You should be able to build AI models only. Then you will be able to work in the field of AI. No, Azure has made ready made models and they have made ready made models available to you. OK. So they have made ready-made models available to you in different categories. OK, so if I just show that to you. Let me show that to you what all categories they have made available. So in total, they have divided the ready-made models into eight categories. OK, so one is document intelligence. Let's say you have invoices. You want to scan invoices, perform analysis over it. You can do that. OK, let's say a PDF document, something like that. On the other hand, let's say uh, uh, okay, so this service called language service can be used to create chatbots. So we just created a chatbot, integrated it in our website. Then let's say you have some text document you want to perform analysis. You can do it with the language service. On the other hand, let's say you have some images and videos. You want to perform analysis over them. You can use vision service. On the other hand, let's say you want to convert speech from one language to another, do analysis on speech. You can use the speech service. On the other hand, let's say you want to translate your text from one language to another. Let's say uh, uh, Gopin, you have written a book and you want to translate it from one language to another. You can go ahead and use translator service. OK, and let's say Gopin, you have created a YouTube channel. You want to make sure that all the co comments that are encountered in your window videos are appropriate comments. There are no bad words, nothing like that. OK, in that case, you can use content safety service. That will automatically scan whether the content being put out is appropriate or not. Okay. Then you have Azure AI search, which will search for uh, search for your desired data in uh, sorry desired uh, uh, data in any type of content. It could be video content, image content, PDF, text, anything. Okay, uh, so you can use that service. And uh, the thing is, you might wonder that yes. 
we can search for those things in document intelligence as well right so we can search for things in uh, uh, a pdf file using document intelligence service but you can only search for predefined things what if you want to cust want to customize your search you cannot do it over here okay but in search service you can do it okay it's more complex to use but yes you have more flexibility as well but yes uh, very complex to use if you are a beginner okay then uh, as you would know that open ai company who made chat gpt has tied up with azure so whatever models open ai makes it makes it available on azure as well if you want to use those ai models you can go ahead and use it so gopen what we did today was i tried to show you labs of speech service so we saw today how to convert our speech from one language to another gopen if you want i will give you the code for that as well so gopen this code that i am attaching right now uh, helped us to convert speech from one language to another you can try it out in your laptop as well okay then gopen what we did was in the second lab using the vision service we tried to analyze images okay so i'll give you the code for that for analyzing images so gopen that was the second lab that we performed i have given the code for second lab as well then gopen in the third lab using the same vision service we tried to read text inside of the images so i had some images in which some text was written we tried to read text inside of them and gopen i will give you the code for that as well i will attach it in the chat over here so gopen that was the third lab that we did then gopen we moved on to our fourth lab in the fourth lab we tried to perform analysis over text using the language service okay and gopen this is the code to do that i am going ahead and giving you the code over here so this code is for lab number 4 wherein using the language service we try to analyze text after that using the same language service we try to create a conversational bot and we try to integrate it into our website we did that and uh, over here Uh, we had a simple website simple html page and there we tried to integrate our chatbot that we created so i'm going ahead and giving you the code for that as well okay fine so up till now gopen we have worked with uh, three services already speech service vision service language service for speech service we have performed one lab for vision service two for language service also two so total five labs we already done with okay uh now what we'll do is we'll take a 10 minute break and after that we'll come back and we'll move on to the rest of the labs so gopen did you get a idea buddy of what we did today if you have any doubt gopen let me know we did five labs and gopen have attached the code for all the five labs okay fine so let's take a short break now Okay, of uh, let's take a short tea break of around ten to twelve minutes. After that, we'll be back and we'll continue with our AI journey. Okay, fine. So let's take a break now. I just start the clock. Let's take a break of around ten to eleven minutes, and then we'll be back. Till then, I'll just be on mute.
Welcome back to this session, everyone. Hope all of you are back after the break. Now let's resume. So I hope everybody is back. Just put a confirmation in the chat so that we can proceed. So go pain, other students. We are back from the break. Just put a message. Yes, Lakshman. OK, fine. So let's move forward. So we have already seen the demo of speech service. We have already seen demo of prison service. We have already seen demo of language service. Now let's go ahead and let's see a demo of document intelligence service. So let's assume that I have some invoices with me. Let me go ahead and let me get those invoices so that you can properly understand what I'm trying to say. So let me get those invoices. So for that, in order to work with it, I'll create a new folder called Lab 6. Okay. Now I have one invoice with me. I'll just go ahead and show you that invoice, which is in PDF format. So this is similar to invoices that you guys would be receiving, right? For example, with me, uh, after the month ends, uh, I receive this type of invoice wherein my compensation and everything has been shipped. So let's say I want to analyze this so that I don't uh, have to go through this invoice every time manually. I can just ask the document intelligence service to give me information on it. For example, if I ask it to give me information about uh, the total amount mentioned, so it should give it to me. If I ask it to mention information about who was the vendor, so it should say Contoso Limited was the vendor. Okay, and so on, like that, every other information. Okay, how to do it? Let's see. So we want to use document intelligence service. In order to use it, I'll have to create a resource of that service. So what I will do is I'll go to Azure AI services. And create a resource of document intelligence service. In order to do it, I'll click on this option of document intelligence and then create a resource of document intelligence service by clicking on the create button. When I do that, I'm redirected to a web page that I have to fill. So let me go ahead. Let me fill in the details of the form over here. First, I'll fill in the information about the subscription that I want to use, then the resource group, then the region in which I want my resource to lie, then the name of the resource. Let me give it a name saying webinar document resource. After that, I have to choose the pricing tier. There are two options, free and standard. Well, the free tier has certain limitations. So to avoid that, I'll use the standard tier. With that, some costs will be deducted, but that's fine. Then I will directly jump to review plus create. So I will ask Azure to review the details entered by me and check if it can give me the things that I'm asking for. Azure runs a validation. The validation was successful because of which the create button is now enabled. Let me click on the create button and then a resource of the document intelligence service will be created for. Me. Once the resource is created, I will show you what to do next. So I'll let the resource be created over here. Once it's created, we'll see what to do. So let us wait for 30 seconds or so. And within 30 seconds, we should have the resource ready. Let us just wait. It is taking some time. We'll just wait over here. Once the resource is ready, I'll show you what to do next. OK. Fine, so the resource has been created. So what I'll do is I'll go to the resource. And uh, now I have the resource completely ready with me. So let me go ahead and now let me try to use the resource that I have just created. So what I would do is I'll create a coding file. And in that coding file, I'll write the code to use the resource that I just created. Let me name my coding file as a document 
dot py. Okay. Now, in order to use the resource of document intelligence service, I'll need two things. First is the key of my resource, and second is the region in which the resource lies. So let me get those two things by clicking on this section called keys and endpoint. So let me click on it. And from here, I'll get two things that I want. First is the key of the resource, and second is the region in which the resource lies. So let me go ahead and let me paste the key of the resource. And secondly, I'll just paste in the region in which the sorry, I'll just paste in the end endpoint in which the resource lies. In other words, I'll paste the link to the resource. Once I have the two things, I can gain access to the resource. And in order to gain access, I will need help of a class which I will import. So from Azure folder, there is a subfolder called AI. Inside that subfolder, we have a file called form recognizer. Inside that file, I will try to import this class called document analysis client. Now using the class, I will try to gain access to the resource of document intelligence service. So first I will have to pass the endpoint of the resource. Let me pass the endpoint. And second, I will pass information about the key of the resource, which will act as a authentication credential. So let me pass information about the key but I cannot pass it directly. I have to pass it using a function, just like I've been doing in the last few labs. Let me do it from the Azure folder. There is a, another subfolder called core. Inside that subfolder, we have a file called credentials. From that file, I will try to import this class called Azure key credential. Let me go ahead. Sorry, it's a function called Azure key credential. Let me uh, call this function and through this function, I'll pass the key of my resource. Fine. With this, I have passed two important things. First is the endpoint of my resource. Second is the key of my resource. Now I will gain access to the resource of document intelligence service. I will gain access to resource of document intelligence service. And once I gain access, I'll show you what to do next. First, let me check whether I'm able to gain access or not. If this line of code works, there is no error. Then I just want to print it out to the user that access to resource has been granted. OK, let's see whether it works or not. I'll just try to run this code called document.py. Let's see whether it works. It works and access to resource of document intelligence service has been granted. Now what I will do is I'll try to use the model uh, that is there in document intelligence service to analyze this invoice document. OK, you can either create your custom models or use the pre-existing model. Here I'll use the pre-existing model called document model ID. OK, so sorry, in uh, document model ID, I will just mention the name of my pre-existing model. So I'll say it's a pre-built model made for invoices. So I'll say pre-built invoice. That's the name of the model. OK, so I'll mention that name and uh, it will understand a uh, language uh, in English. So I'll just mention that setting that it will understand language in English. OK, fine. Then what is the document that I want to scan? I will mention that as well. So what I will do is I already have a URL. Let me show that. I already have a URL. Uh, wherein I'm published, uh, wherein this document has been published. That URL could be published at any place. It could be published at GitHub or any other place. You just need the URL of it. So I'll take the URL and paste it over here. Okay, so I've mentioned the model that I would use to analyze my document. Then I've mentioned the URL of the document that I want to analyze. Okay, now let's go ahead and let's begin our analysis. So what I would do here is I will just go ahead and I will tell my resource to begin analysis. So I will say begin analysis from the URL of the document that has been provided to you. Which model to use? I've already mentioned the model pre-built invoice. That's the name of the model, AI model. Uh, then which document to analyze? I've mentioned the URL of the document to analyze. And in which language that document is written, I've mentioned that it's written in English language. Okay, 
fine. Let's go ahead. And let's see what to do next. Once this is done, uh, it tries to begin analysis, complete the analysis, and I'll store the result of that in this variable. And I will say, once you are done with the analysis, go ahead and give me the result. Whatever is the result, I will just store it. And then at the end, I'll just print the result in its raw form. Let's see how the result looks like. Let's see how the raw result looks like. I'll just wait for a few seconds. It is still doing the analysis and here I have my raw result. Fine, so it has detected information about various fields in the invoice and here it looks too big. So what I will do is I will just say print the names of uh, the fields for which you have detected the result. OK, so what I will do is I'll do one thing here. I will say you have analyzed the document. Now from it. What I would want to do is give me the names of those fields for which you have the information ready with you. And I want to uh, store that information in the form of a dictionary. So let me use the new enumerate function to convert the result in the form of a dictionary. Dictionary is nothing but key value pair, collection of key value pairs. OK, fine. And I'll just say, give me the names of those fields. Give me the names of those fields for which you have detected the values. So fine with this code, it will go ahead and give me the names. And let's see what does it do over here. OK, here you can see it. So these are the fields for which it has detected values. So let's say going forward, if I want to ask it uh, the name of the vendor, we know from this invoice the name of the vendor is Contoso Limited. So it should tell me Contoso Limited, right? So let's see. So this is the field for which it has detected the value. So let me ask the value for that field. So I'll say print the vendor name. And we will get the vendor name over here. By writing this piece of code. We will say that we have already obtained the fields. Now for those fields get the value. Which value? The value for vendor name. The value for vendor name here. OK, let's go ahead. Let's run the code and you will see that the vendor name that it will tell me will be Contos Limited. If the analysis is right, it should tell me Contoso Limited. And yes, the vendor name is Contoso Limited. You can see in the invoice, the vendor name is Contoso Limited. OK, like that, if you want to see the billing address, you can go ahead and get that as well. So let's say billing address. Will be obtained from this particular field. Let's run the code. And along with the vendor name, now the billing address will also be given. And you can see the billing address is given over here. OK, so from the invoice, some billing address would have been mentioned. OK, uh, and that is the same that is mentioned over here. So you can see billing address. Microsoft Corp, 123, other street. That is the same one mentioned. So it says house number is 123. A road is Bill Street, City Redmond. OK. Ah, from your Bill Street, City Redmond. OK, state WA, postal code 98052. It has given the same exact information. All right, like that, it will give you different, different information. These are the fields for which you can ask it for information. All right, so that was about our lab on document intelligence service. So here, remember, you get an additional option to train your own model as well. So if you want to train your own document intelligence model, 
you can do it. Or if you want to use the pre-existing AI models, you can do that as well. So it's completely up to you. So with this in total, how many labs we have seen? Let's just check. We have seen labs on speech service. We have seen labs on vision service. We have seen labs on language service. We have seen lab on document intelligence service. Now let me do one thing. Let me show you a lab on open AI service. OK, so we'll just go ahead and we'll see a lab on open AI service. Uh, and let us try to understand it in detail. OK, so as you would know that open AI as a company has tied up with uh, Azure. So all the AI models that open AI makes, it makes it available on Azure as well. So if you want to use it, you can go ahead and try to use those AI models. It's completely up to you. OK, uh, till then, just to revise over here. So the first question that I want to ask you is, in the beginning of our course, we had learned about what is AI. So can anybody answer to me what is AI? What is artificial intelligence? Can anybody mention it? Up till now, you should get an idea of what is artificial intelligence. So what is it? Anyone? What is AI? What is artificial intelligence? You guys are given the answer to it in the morning. Anyone with the answer now? Okay, Lakshman says, yes, AI is a field that makes our job easy and accurate. Okay, how uh, it makes, uh, so AI is a field containing tools that you can use for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. And by doing that, Luxman, I agree that it makes it easier. Uh, it makes your job easier. OK, so but the official definition is AI is a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data by inference we mean insights. And second is to get predictions from data. Now, how do we do that? How do we get inferences and predictions from data? We do that by using something called a AI model. What is a AI model? It's a statistical representation of a real world process. In other words, we are trying to simulate a real world process using statistics or using mathematics. Okay, right. So you can create your own AI model or use the existing AI models that Azure has made for you. It's up to you. And Azure has made many AI models and it is divided into different different categories. We are looking into one such category called Azure Open AI category. Okay. So here you will be able to access the models of OpenAI in the Azure platform. Let's see how to do it. So what I will do is I'll search for Azure AI services. And then in order to gain access to OpenAI service, I'll have to create a resource of OpenAI service. So let me click on this option in order to create a resource of OpenAI service. When I do that, I'm redirected to a form that I have to fill. Let me fill in the details of the form. The first field in the form is asking me to select subscription. As you would know, in one account, you can have more than one subscriptions. You have to choose the subscription of your choice that has enough money in it. Second field in the form is asking me to select the resource group. Every resource in Azure has to fall within some of the other resource group. And resource groups help us for better resource management, nothing else. So you can choose the existing resource group or create a new one. Here I'll choose the existing resource group. Fine. After that, I need to mention the region in which my resource lies. So make sure to choose a region closer to your user just for better latency. Then I need to give a name to my resource. So let me give it a name saying webinar open AI resource. After that, let me select the pricing tier. I have exhausted the limit of free tier. So that's why that option is no longer visible to me. So I'll select standard tier. Let me click on next button. And now I'm uh, asked to specify the settings for network security. Let me do that. Here there are three options. If I select the first option, it would mean that the resource that I'm creating will be accessible over the internet. It will have a public endpoint that can be reached from any network, provided that the requester has the necessary authentication credentials. Right, and up till now, whatever resource we have been creating, uh, we have been making sure that it is accessible over the internet using a public endpoint. Right, and we have also been giving uh, necessary authentication credentials. 
So if you want to make a resource similar to what you have been doing up till now, choose the first option. Okay. On the other hand, if I choose the second option, this will allow me to specify which networks can access the resource. So it's a more secure setting because look, you can limit access to certain networks that you can trust. For example, you might allow only your uh, com corporate network to access the resource, or you might allow only specific IP addresses to access the resource. So this is typically done through network security groups or firewall rules that you define. OK, so in short, basically. If you want to make sure that only your company people should access the resource, then you can make sure that you provide the IP addresses of those and only people with those IP addresses will be able to access your resource. OK, on the other hand, the third option. Or make sure that the resource will not be accessible from any public network. I repeat, selecting the third option makes sure that the resource will not be accessible from any public network, including the Internet. The only way to access the resource is through a private endpoint, which is a network interface that connects you privately and securely to a service powered by Azure privately. So private endpoints uh, use a private IP address from your virtual network, ensuring that the traffic between your virtual network and the service on Azure does not traverse the Internet. So if you want to make sure that the access does not traverse the Internet, use the third option is the most secure one. So the choice among these options should be guided based on the specific network security requirements of your organization. For public facing services, you might opt for the first option, but for sensitive or internal services, you would likely choose the second or third to enhance security. For this lab demonstration, I will choose the first option and then I will click on this button called next. After that, I'm redirected to a page where I have to perform tag configuration. Tags are name value pairs that you can assign to resources in Azure, and they help you to categorize resources in various ways, such as by purpose, by owner, by environment, or by any other criteria that is meaningful to your organization. So you can give a tag name saying that your the purpose of creating this is for learning. OK, with this, what will happen is let's say you have created 100 resources in your subscription. Now, if you want to search for your resources, tags help you to search for resources in a much better manner. So you can search based on purpose or by any other field that you want. So whatever is that field, you have to put the name of it and then you have to put a value for that field. OK, here though I won't do any tag configuration. I'll click on the next button and Azure will run a validation on the backend to check whether it can give me the things that I'm asking for. The validation was successful because of which the create button has been enabled now. So let me click on the create button. And with that, a resource of the open AI service will be created. So let us just wait. Once the resource is created, we'll see what to do. So it will take around two to three minutes for the resource to get created. So let's just wait. OK, till then I hope. Uh, it's clear to everyone. This is our last lab of today. Uh, today our goal was to complete four labs only. However, we have done more than four, so that's good. So this will be our last lab of today. OK, fine. So let me go to this resource. And now. What I would do is uh, I need to use a model of OpenAI. In order to do that, I will explore OpenAI Studio. So here there is a button to explore OpenAI Studio. You can click on this button. Or you can click on the above button. It will do the exact same thing. Let me click on the above one. Okay, now I'm redirected to Azure AI Studio. There I will get access to OpenAI models. So Azure OpenAI Studio, here I'm getting access to OpenAI models now. What I will do is in order to use any of the OpenAI models, I will have to deploy that OpenAI model first. I will have to tell Azure that, okay, this is the model that I'll be using. So for that, to tell it that, I'll have to deploy the model. So let me click on deployments. Let me create a new deployment. I'll select the model that I want to deploy. There are many, many models over here. 
uh, you might be familiar with this module called GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K. Yeah, instead of 3.5, it is written as 3.5. Okay, then you have GPT 4, which is the latest version and so on. Remember, GPT 3.5 Turbo has a limit of 4,000 characters. Okay, so in one session, it can remember 4,000 characters. On the other hand, GPT 3.5 Turbo 16K has a limit of 16,000 characters. Sorry, not characters. My mistake. GPT 3.5 Turbo has a limit of 4,000 tokens. Tokens can be thought of as words. Okay. So, for example, I'm writing a sentence like this How are you? So, how is one token? R is another token. U is another token. Exclamation is another token. Then, in the background, it might generate synonyms for each of the words. So those will be additional tokens, okay? So uh, tokens can be thought of as words. Uh, fine, so in GPT-3.5 Turbo, I have a limit of 4,000 tokens. In GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K, I have a limit of 16,000 tokens. Other models like DAL-E are used for image generation, but I want to do text conversation. So for text conversation, DAL-E is not the ideal one. Let me use GPT-3.5 Turbo 16K. Okay, model version, I'll say auto update to default. So that in case I have uh, deployed my model in it, and if any update comes in that model, automatically I want my I want that update to reflect in my deployment. Then I'll keep the deployment type standard. Anyways, there is just one option available. Deployment name, I'll just call it webinar open AI model. Content filter, so I'll use the default content filter available by open AI. Uh, it will make sure that there is no inappropriate uh, answer given. Okay, fine. Then tokens per uh, minute rate limit. Okay, so in a minute, how many tokens it can process? Okay, all of that. Fine, you can select the rate limit. Does not, does not matter. Let me create the deployment over here. And uh, my deployment has been created. So now I can use my model uh, to for test purposes. So let me go to the chat section because this model that I've deployed is for chatting purpose. So let me go to chat section. And here you will encounter three different, uh, you can say, sections over here. In this page, you will encounter three different sections. In the first section, uh, here you have to put, uh, it's called assistant section basically or in other words, assistant setup. Okay, so here uh, it's used to set the context for the model's responses. So for example, you might want your model to act as a, 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 a stock expert. So we will put that context over here that please act as a stock expert. How to do it? All of that I will explain, so don't worry. Okay, then uh, in the middle section, this is where you actually chat with your chat uh, with your model. Okay. In the third section, this is where you will put all the required settings for the model. Okay. I'll show you what all settings you can do. Fine. So now let me do one thing. What I would do is uh, let me explain uh, the configuration section to you. Okay. So let me go to parameters. The first field in the form, uh, first field here in parameters is max response. Okay, so now what does max response mean? It means the maximum length of the response that the model will generate. So it's typically measured in tokens. So here it's set to 800 tokens. You can change it. You might have observed that when you interact with chat GPT, the answer does not go beyond a certain uh, length, right? So there are some maximum uh, length of answer is set. Similarly, here for your answer, you can set a maximum length in the form of tokens. Tokens can be thought of as words. Okay, so you can change uh, the limit as per your own need. Then next, the next setting that you see over here is temperature. So this parameter com controls the randomness of the response. A temperature closer to zero makes the model more deterministic, favoring more likely, uh, likely responses. Whereas a higher temperature increases randomness, reading, uh, leading to more varied outputs. So for example, uh, let me set a very lower value, something like zero, and let me ask it a few questions. I will say, how is Mumbai as a city? 
okay how is mumbai as a city so it will give me some response and you will see that uh, when i will again ask it the same question and because i have set temperature value to a very low value it will give me almost the same answer okay and can you see guys the above answer and below answer is the same i don't know whether you can see it properly or not in the above answer it gave me some points six points to be exact here also six points to be exact you can see everything over here is the same almost everything there are some changes here there but almost everything is the same however if i increase the temperature value to a higher value then you will see that what will happen is for every word some synonym will be given to me okay so i'll get a little slightly different output so let me ask it again now you can see uh, so i'm getting slightly different output over here so for example previously uh okay i guess as compared to previous scenario it's slightly different cultural diversity cosmopolitan structure okay you will see as compared to the previous answer it's more different okay for example here it is saying that the city is dotted with iconic landmarks and attractions whereas in the previous answer i don't see any word called dotted okay so it has given the same answer but in the form of synonyms it has generated more synonyms so the higher temperature value will lead to more varied output whereas if you have a lower temperature value it will give almost the same answer as previous uh, previous one okay with higher temperature value it is likely to give more different output when i say different what it will do is the answer will be the same is just that in that answer uh, it will try to use different different words okay so it will try to use synonyms of those words basically all right after that we have this option called top p okay so let me go ahead and let me use that option and let me show to you how it would work so it's also known as nucleus sampling top p is also known as nucleus sampling okay so it's a method used in text generation with models like open ai gpt series to control the randomness of the output even this one is used to control the randomness so it works by only considering the top p percent most likely next tokens based on their predicted probability distribution let me show you a simple example to show you how top p works okay let me show you a simple example to show you how it works so let's say i have a sentence saying that the cat sat sat on the dash okay and the model wants to find out what word it should put over here so what it will do is it might have some synonym in its mind so let's say for example it might have a answer of mat for which in its mind the probability is 0.30 it might have a on a word of rub for which it thinks that the probability is 0.25 and so on it might have a word called window sill for which the probability is 0.15 it might have a pro word called car for which the probability is 0.10 and so on remember that for all the words the probabilities will add up to 1 okay for all the words the probabilities will add up to 1 so they are sum will be equal to 1 sum of probability will be equal to 1 remember this okay here i have just written some of the words like that for different words we could have different probabilities now what will happen over here is it wants to find out that in this blank space which word to put mat or rug or window sill or what to put so what will happen is it will look at the value of top p so for example let's say for top p i have put a value of let's say something like 0.60 okay 0.60 let's say i have put this word of 0.60 now what will happen because of that in order to understand it i will need help of one student so let me take help of uh, one student here uh, one second okay uh, let me take help of lakshman Okay, so Lakshman, please help me out, buddy. Lakshman, what is the top p value that I had set? Zero point six. So what we need to do 
is we need to sum the probability values of the words until the sum is greater than 0.6. Okay, so Lakshman, if I take the sum of first four words, can I say it is greater than 0.6? Yes, Lakshman, if I take the sum of the uh, probability of first four words, is it greater than 0 0.6 or not? Yes, okay. So that means first four words cannot be considered. Let me take, take the sum of first three words. Lakshman, tell me, is the sum of probability of first three words greater than 0 0.6? Sum of probabilities of first three words. Is it greater than 0 0.6? Again, yes, right? Again, yes. So that means I cannot take all the three words in consideration. Let me take the pro uh, sum of probability of first two words. Now let me know, guys. Is the sum uh, greater than 0 0.6 or not? Is the sum greater than 0 0.6 or no? sum of probability of first two words. Is it greater than 0 0.6 or no in this scenario? Yes or no? No, right? So what will happen is since now the sum is great, not greater than 0 0.6, it's less than 0 0.6. So in top P, what we do over here is we add the most probable tokens until the accumulative probability reaches 0 0.6. So in this case, we would take mat and rug. These two tokens add up to 0 0.55, which is the closest we can get to 0 0.6 without going over it. Okay. So uh, if we take the next word, windowsill, it will uh, make our sum greater than 0 0.6. So we cannot take that. Okay. So here the only two words that I will shortlist is mat and rug. Mat and rug. These are my two shortlisted words. Now, out of the two shortlisted words, it will take any one and place it over here based on randomness. So let's say in the first answer, randomly it could write mat. In the next answer, randomly it could write rug or anything like that. So first what it will do is, it will consider all the possible words. From all the possible words, it will shortlist the words based on top P. So top P is used nothing but to shortlist the words. And once the words are shortlisted, out of the shortlisted words, you might get any one randomly in your answer. Okay, so short, uh, top P is used to shortlist the synonyms because there could be many, many synonyms, right? So it is used to shortlist them. Okay, fine. Then uh, after that, you have this uh, another field called stop sequence. So this is a predefined sequence of tokens that tells the model when to stop generating further text. So when the model outputs this sequence, it understands that, okay, the uh, model response now should end. Okay, then we have frequency penalty. So this parameter decreases the likelihood of a token being chosen if it has already appeared in the current text generation. The more times a token has been used, the less likely it is to be used again. Okay, so that is frequency penalty. So you can penalize the words that, okay, no, uh, I don't want uh, the same words to be repeated again and again. Okay, so for example, if the word excellent has been used multiple times in a piece of generated text, increasing the frequency penalty would make it less likely that the same word excellent would be selected by the model again in the same piece of text. Okay, then uh, the sixth option over here is presence penalty. So this parameter reduces the chances of a token being used again based on its presence, not its frequency. So even if a model has appeared just once, a high presence penalty makes it less likely to be used again. Okay, so it encourages the introduction of new concepts and terms in the generated text. Okay, so for instance, if the text has already mentioned Paris, a high presence penalty would discourage the model from mentioning Paris again, promoting the generation of content that explores new topics or ideas. Okay, uh, fine. So just remember that over here. Uh, all right. So now let's go ahead and remember this token count, guys, that as, as I keep on interact with interacting with it, the token count will keep on increasing. But remember, this token count is of a specific session. So for example, it is saying that, okay, in a session, how many messages it should remember? 
because sometimes we do uh, interactive chat right for example i might say that okay, i might say uh, what is ai then based on the answer i might i might say that okay in the answer that you gave explain this so like that i am uh, uh, doing interactive chat okay wherein i am uh, i want my model to remember the previous question and answers as well okay so I, I i just have to put a value that how many previous messages it should remember in a session okay if it is one or something like that fine you can change it if you want to okay so for example i will say hi okay and let me decrease this value to one with that what will happen is if i say hi Okay, so now what it will do is it will only remember tokens up till one message in a session. Okay, so you have to put uh, a value as to uh, in a session how many messages it can remember, ten or whatever limit you want to specify. You can specify it. Maximum is twenty, minimum is one. Between that, you can select any number. Okay, it's better to choose a higher number. Okay, so your chatbot will be more better. it will remember that okay what that user is talking about previously and based on that it will adjust it current answer fine so this was about those configuration settings okay i'll close this uh now as i mentioned the middle section is to chat with the model let me explain this session uh, this section here as i mentioned i can put the uh, context in which the model has to be here so there are three types of messages first is system message here i can say that how it has to behave so i will say that act as a stock broker act as a stock broker okay i'll just go ahead and apply the changes and uh, now uh let me also show to you after applying the changes what would happen so in this scenario now let me ask it uh what which fmcg stock to buy which fmcg stock to buy okay so you can see it is giving the answer but what i want to do is i want to give a context to the model that give me a one line answer only so what i can do is i can i can give it examples okay so i can give i can add examples over here okay so when i click on add button it gives me two messages first is user message second is assistant message so in user message i can pass a example question example question and in the assistant message i can pass a example answer that okay if anybody asks you this question then this is the uh, answer that you should give it okay like that i want to train my model so i will say if anybody asks you which fmcg stock to buy uh you will just say uh buy itc okay similarly let me add another example i will now say which i will ask a question saying which uh, defense stock to buy so in that case you should give me a one line answer saying buy uh something like h a l okay hindustan aeronautical limited something like that that is the full form okay like that more and more examples so the model trains in a better way okay and now let me show that to you yeah i'm adjusting the system settings uh Uh, because i don't want it to remember the previous answer over here fine let me just mention hi it will give me some response okay now what i will do is i'll first save the changes so what i have done is in the system message i have added a context that okay this is how you should behave and then i have given examples this is example 1 this is example 2 so i have given two examples so as far as uh, user messages are concerned you can put multiple user messages as far as assistant messages are concerned you can put multiple assistant messages but as far as system messages concerned you can only put a single system message okay fine user and assistant messages are used to act as examples so user message will act as a example question assistant message will act as a example answer 
So now that I've applied the changes, now if I ask it that which uh, IT stock to buy, which IT stock to buy, can you see? Now it is giving me a one line answer. Previously, when, it, when I was asking it, it was giving me a, a, a big answer. But now since I've trained it on my examples, okay, in this example, you can see the answer that I gave was in one line. In second example, you can see the answer that I was gave was one line. Because of that, it has trained itself. And now whenever I'll ask it such a question, it understands that I have to, uh, that the model should give a one line answer. Like that, you can train it as per your own choice. Okay, so here you can see this is how you can use any open AI model. We just use one open AI model called uh, GPT-35 Turbo 16K, which has a limit of 16,000 tokens. That's why the name 16K was given. Okay, fine. So that was about the open AI service. Any doubts over here, do let me know. Ha, as Gopan mentions, GPT-3.5 is not that uh, effective. I agree. Uh, ideally, you should use GPT-4. But I just wanted to show to you that you can use any model. Okay, so even if with GPT-3.5, you can train it as per your own choice. With GPT-4, also you can do the same. Okay, you can use the model of your own choice. Look, okay. It depends upon you as a user. Okay, anyways. So that was our last service of today. With this, we saw labs on speech service. We saw labs on vision service. We saw labs on language service. We saw labs on document intelligence service. We saw labs on open AI service. Okay, today we just wanted to complete four labs, but we saw more than four, which is good. Fine, so we'll end for today. Is there any doubt that you would uh, like to ask? Then do let me know. Any doubt in your minds? Okay. Uh, I will wait for a minute if in case you are typing something. Do let me know if there is any doubt whatsoever. Will you share the resources? Yes, uh, Archie will share the resources with you. So once you get the badge uh, in your Outlook account, then by default, uh, you will gain access to learning resources over there. Okay, so it's important to redeem the badge. Where can I download the certificate? You mean the badge for attending the session? Certificate uh, you will get after you pass the exam, but since you attended this session, uh, you will get a badge that will be given by Microsoft. Okay, since we are partners with Microsoft, you will get a badge from Microsoft. And I guess Archie has mentioned uh, the uh, steps to redeem the badge. I'll just go ahead and paste the same over here below. Lakshman says, what exam? Uh, so your uh, Lakshman, this class was about AI 900 exam. Okay. So whatever labs we did were related to AI 900 examination. You can just search for it, AI 900 exam. So like that, there are many certification exams in that Azure offers. One of them is AI 900. So if you want to go into the AI field first, you should start with AI 900. Then you should go for AI 102. After that, you should go for AI 050. This is the way in which you should move ahead. First, AI 900 then AI 102, then AI 050. Okay, so for AI, these are the three important certification that Azure offers. Start with AI 900 first. Okay, and you can go to the official page of uh, Microsoft to see how you can uh, schedule the examination and everything. Okay. Let me check if there are any other questions. Uh, Gopen says last class today means. Are you saying about last lab? Uh, we are done with the last lab. Okay, any other question then do let me. Yes, welcome Lakshman. Okay, if there is any other doubt guys, 
uh, then let me know. Topin, you or other students, if there is any other query that you want to ask, then let me know. Okay. Fine. So it seems uh, that is it for today. As far as the recording is concerned, we'll upload our recording on our official YouTube channel. Okay. So fine. Uh, that is it for today, guys. I hope uh, you found the webinar useful. Okay. And if you have any doubts going forward, uh, uh, you can contact uh, our uh, team, internal team, or you can contact me on LinkedIn as well. Okay, Ganesh, can you please share the customized chatbot material? Fine, I'll do one thing, Ganesh. I have the material with me. Do contact, uh, do connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, there, what I'll do is I'll find my tutorial video on the same and I'll share it with you. Okay, so here is my LinkedIn. One second. So if you just search for LinkedIn, Smitsha Synergetics, my profile will appear. Okay, there's my profile. You can connect with me over there if you want. Already connected, Achha. perfect. Then that's good. Okay, fine. So I'll share my uh, any material that I have with me. I, uh, I already have a, a tutorial video. I'll just check where is it. All right, so thank you for attending. I hope the session was useful to you so that's it for uh, today guys thank you and bye and we'll meet again in our next webinar session yes welcome ganesh thank you thank you everybody all right gopin was asking me for linkedin yes i've sent my linkedin uh, link as well okay Fine. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you and bye.